the sixth mass, mass extinction, as it's called, biodiversity around the world on land and in water is incredibly threatened, which has huge implications for us and for the future of all life on the planet. One of the key problems, aside from all of the pollutants, climate change, etc., is simply habitat loss around the world, habitat loss and disruption. And nobody thinks that this happens all at once. You know, it's like, well, take this little piece, this little piece, this little piece. When you look at a map of the world and the previous habitats that species have inhabited and the current isolated tiny patchwork that they now inhabit, it's clear that every developer needs to take this in mind right now, no matter what the scale is. We have a lot of wild land around here, and I think we really need to consider that and preserve it and, and use the already developed space more wisely. Thank you. Any other members of the public who should comment? Yes, uh, Seaside takes exception to the letter. Thank you. Um, all right, we'll move now to uh, the uh, meeting minutes of the February 14th meeting. Um, are there any comments, questions, or corrections to those meeting minutes? Oh, and I think um, Harrison had some. One question. Questions. So uh, we, we thought that it would be useful to 
have any further discussion here that, that might you all might like to take up. I know that um, after the meetings on the 21st and uh, subsequently our consultant team, uh, in particular Aaron Harway and the DEA folks, uh, were in touch with the, um, the regulatory agencies on this question of actually appears here and I foresee this phasing discussion with feedback from regulators and um, you know uh, there's some there's some feedback from, from those conversations that might be relevant here that affect the question of, of, of is it feasible to get this uh, EIR with new alternatives complete by uh, within the diminishing time frame so I think that might be something that we want to hear about and um, you know, I, I think it's probably also an interesting question to hear um, from not only the, the folks around the table that are jurisdictions, uh, but also the potential permittees. Uh, you know, I keep hearing from uh, people that are reading news reports all over the Bay Area about this uh, new state park that's coming to the Fort Ord Dunes. And um, I know we have Steve Bachman from the state parks. And, occurred to me that, you know, uh, while we're getting all this great feedback about this great new park that's coming, you know, how, if, if your agency is looking to this EIR as, as a tool for advancing that park, I think these are considerations that, that would, uh, I, I believe, be important for you all as policymakers to uh, understand and, uh, and get into this a question maybe today about utility of, of this EIR because because even though we've gotten this high price uh, opinion letter the memo that's that's on your table you know this has been uh, it's not a simple solution everybody that I talked to has gotten some different take on it so I just think this group as a working group would have more of an opportunity to have a discussion that might not be so feasible at our regular board meeting so that's what I would I would ask is preamble for taking on item 4B and we might be able to hear some of the some of the information that Aaron you you heard from the from the regulators and then if we might be able to get into a discussion maybe kind of a, uh, going around the room we used to in the first few of these meetings we were at the round tables and, and that was kind of nice because we could all stand up and have a moment to say something but it seems like you know hearing from Steve Bachman and maybe going around the room. So, how does your agency see the utility of having this EIR? What is your view on, on the value of that to your particular mission? Those are some interesting questions that I, I could use as a as somebody who's trying to bring information to the board. So, as you go around the room and ask the utility and the value to the different agencies, it would be of importance from my perspective, is to know what is the financial contribution that comes from that agency or entity to funding the actual Habitat Conservation Plan. I'm not asking that it's completely detailed, but I need to know if there's financial contributions and the source of that. And also then their willingness to step up if there is any kinds of lawsuits to defend and their representation of being involved in that process. So those are components that I am very interested in because I think it's inherent in the jurisdictions that we all know there's a financial contribution. We kind of have some ideas about that. And as permittees, we're also understanding we're stepping up and we're on the line for the litigation defense should it occur. Thank you. Okay, so, so Aaron, do you want to tell us what happened when you spoke with the regulators about uh, the question of would we be able to get into understanding this phasing alternative today and when we would, when we would be able to, uh, what, what they said? Sure, that one's easy. How many are over here? Uh, we've yeah. got yeah, why don't you come sit okay. here with this mic?
Uh, who's on the phone, please? Anyone? Anyone?
revise this take analysis and potentially decide to revise the HCP or go out of their loan or whatever you guys um, as a group decide to do. That's separate. It's number crunching us working with the agencies. We know um, what a reduced take alternative looks like and we can draft that and put some numbers in that would be helpful for later analysis if the JPA has a revised.